Hi, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn, Jeff Chen. How are you doing? Good. How are you going, Flynn? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, it's been a long time since we've had you on, so it's great to see you, and thanks for spending some time with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, and um, thanks for having me on here. So this is, yeah, typically the kind of things I do. I like to draw uh, characters digitally, and mainly for games or, like, uh, some graphic novels and... Um, some film stuff as well. So typically you'll see me do stuff like this, um, more stylized. So kitbashing is where you take assets that you create from artworks that you've done before. Uh, typically you'll see it in 3D. So it's like creating little uh, pieces that are modular. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to create like a room, you'd have walls of like different lengths. So then, you, and you can just keep pa like placing them and um, pasting them in different areas to create new rooms. And then you can use those to create new pieces as well. Um, in 2D, you'd be grabbing pieces like, uh, say I like this horn, and I'll just grab this. And now this is one of my pieces for my kit bashing. So I'm cr basically creating a kit. Right. And then the effect of that is we get a lot of detail given to us at the start. And it's about like the clever arrangement of it um, that will make it into something new and like something interesting that's that's probably not like the dragon that I'm starting off with. Right. Um, in this case, I'm probably going to target, like I have in my mind that I probably want to do something that's more uh, maybe like a, a, a big demon guy or something <laughs> with like a, a weapon. I don't know. I like to see where it takes me. Like uh, this technique is really fun as well because if you sit down and you don't know what to draw and you have like old works, then you could bring it up and then um, start to cut it up, take pieces, place it on here and then start to um, inspire yourself by like the happy accidents that come out of it. Okay. So how many of these, how many of these things would you select? Like, I guess we're going through it now, but like, I like to think about it like this, like when I create a character, I like to have areas of resting space, areas of high detail, and I think distinct shapes. So we have a distinct shape from this horn. Um, this is pretty distinct as well. And we want to also look at like the the graphic um, read, so the different values that we get in black and white, like this, um, like a lighter value versus something that's mid-tone versus something that's more um, dark tone in this one. Right. So if I get that good variety, that will give me a, a more successful kit to work with um, when I kit bash. And then uh, from here, you can do like all kinds of things. You don't have to use exactly what you um, picked. You can start to resize it, warp it, and change the shape so it ends up being something completely different from what you started with. One more thing I want to talk about at this stage is we've created a new piece um, to use from the pieces that we had just then. So this is like, you can use this and like merge it if you want, and then we could like kind of smaller paste it somewhere else, and then this will start to create more cohesion in the new um, piece that we're making. After you've placed your pieces, you can start to mold like the character that you want underneath. So you could like find the silhouette that you want to use. If I can find my brush. Um, so you can start to fill in the silhouette and then find more pieces and start to paste it over. Do you ever use like liquify or puppet warp for any of this? Yeah. You do? Okay. Um, cool. I, yeah, I love liquify. And uh, liquify is that quick way of like, oh, okay. I made a mistake. Um, I'm going to go into liquify and then just, you know, change it into whatever you need it to be. Yeah. Um, it's looking like, like a character yet to you or not yet? Um, it's looking like a floral. Like I'm thinking this is probably more Star Wars than anything, which I rewatched oh. recently, May the 4th. Um, we did a stream um, last week that was all about Star Wars. And then, of course, I just went down a Star Wars rabbit hole. Um, it yeah. reminds me a bit of um, the fight scene in episode two, where they're in the pit. Um, it doesn't look exactly like it, but it's um, kind of like an insectoid, insectoid kind of thing. Um, it looks like that, but with more feathers. Yeah. Um, Am I way alien off? I'm like way kinda, off, right? <laughs> I have no idea. Like, <laughs> I'm just going with uh, what what the pieces are giving me, which is exactly what I was saying at the start, right? Just yeah. uh, let it inspire you, and then you work out from there. I cool. end up being some sort of like vibrant demon-looking knight, which is something I always end up drawing <laughs> it's like your safe space like you're comfortable drawing yeah. that kind of thing you know you know how the posture and pose is kind of works exactly 
Sometimes I wonder if I should break away from that, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. So mm. as long as I have fun, I, I think that's a big part of art, right? Um, mm. I do it because it's fun. So uh, why not? <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm going to be doing a bit more painting now. I think the essential pieces are in. I'm going to start to make more sense of it from here. Cool. So it's looking bipedal. Yeah. Um, I actually might give it... Since it's meant to be more demon, I might give it the sort of beast um, chicken legs, the, the double, oh, yeah, double like joint the, legs. Oh yeah, like the hooves, the crazy Lots backward <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I might just merge this down so it's faster to edit and give our friend some space. Wow, okay, so you just merged everything. <laughs> everything yeah. except the original <laughs> kit stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. And the advantage of that, um, as I said earlier, is I can start to liquefy now. And right. if I want to start to change some proportions or fix up some perspective, I can do that. Cool. So because this guy's standing at three quarter, I need to make sure the side further away from us is a little bit smaller compared to the part that's closer to us. Do you always start, do you always start at the head? I know you started at the head and kind of started bringing it down. Is that, is that typical or? Yeah, um, I think that's good because it's starting to define what the character is. I think mm. for characters, I love the style and like the shape language and um, the identity of the character comes from the head. So designing that first makes it easier for me as well. Quick note on where I'm up to. At the moment, I'm using a multiply layer with a bit of a blue to add shadows. and. This is the process of adding lighting. Um, before that, I wasn't really considering lighting at all because I'm focused on design. So separating those two steps makes it easy for me to sort of process um, each one separately. And doing that makes it so much easier to just focus on lighting and not have to worry about design as I go. Um, so I can make it look convincing um, that it exists in like 3D space and has proper form. It's really bringing out the main features, right? Like there's a lot of plain areas in this, uh, lots, lots of resting space, and that's not too useful. I think the, the really cool features are the parts we want to use. And that gives us a lot of, yeah, a lot of high detail so that when we start to paste it around here, we don't have to focus too much about bringing in detail since it's already given to us from those pieces. The whole process of this is, is really awesome for people who struggle with coming up with ideas because um, it helps like generate ideas for you, basically. Um, if you don't know what to draw, you can just try this technique and then you'll find shapes that are interesting and then move forward from there. Um, when I came into this painting, I didn't have, I had like demon in mind, but I didn't have the pose and like the exact look. There, was, there wasn't anything visualized on my end. So the process you guys saw is exactly what I went through. All right. I've got the first pass of the lighting down, um, mainly focusing on the light direction. So we can hopefully tell that it's coming from the top left at the moment, um, I have a bit of like a lighter value for surfaces that are facing upwards to accommodate for like any secondary light. And that helps like the forms come out in the shadows. Mm. Yeah, so any top facing surfaces, I had like a little bit extra blue and that separates the shadows a, a little bit further. We have to make sense of the forms that we're creating. That's the other part that's difficult about this. You can paste all these cool shapes but if they don't make sense with one another and, and work in, um, in space, then it's going to clash and it'll be very hard to tell what we're looking at. So this step is really cleaning that up and making sure that it all makes sense. I think apply, I like applying the similar shapes to, and like applying the right value to similar shapes. So in this example, um, anything pink is more feathery and light, same as the yellow. Anything white will hopefully look more hard surface. And then the black areas uh, will feel more organic, apart from the horns in this case. Um, so assigning that early can help separate and like help you manage in your mind how you want to set up your piece. I have thought about using someone else's artwork, but like it feels weird if I haven't asked them. <laughs> uh, but I never thought about asking, like talking to someone like, hey, do you want to kid bash each other's artwork? Um, that sounds kind of fun. What brushes are you using? Um, 
I have a big list here and that looks very intimidating. I also have like another big list here that also looks very intimidating, but actually all of this is done through the, the round brushes. So I have my uh, harder brush, which gives me more paint to work with. That's like not very opaque. I have my another one that's better for rendering that actually has a bit of a fade off with spacing. And then I use my soft brush and just these three can get you very far and um, understanding the, I would call them like the fundamental brushes, having like an airbrushy look, something for rendering and something harder for line work or something. That's that's all you really need to get started. Absolutely. And in this case, today I'm mainly focusing on that render brush. So I can blend easier. I won't lie, there, there are some brushes that save me a lot of time, but still, if I don't know how to use it, then it's not gonna accomplish anything. Um, so understanding the fundamentals of what you're trying to achieve with the brush, that's a, uh, that's the first step before you can use the brushes. What is your focus on now? Uh, I think creating readability. So there was a lot of detail. I was sort of, you can see where I was at before the render and during render. Um, so I'm cleaning up this section so it feels more readable. You can see the light mm. shadow shapes help the feathery bits feel more like feather. And now I'm starting to kill off some detail in the shadow. So since I've uh, established my light source, I can now pick where we don't need much information which is most of the times in the shadow. Um, so I'm starting to flatten that area and that will, by flattening this area, will help us focus on these areas where there's high detail that I want people to look at. And that'll give us the illusion that the whole piece feels detailed because I'm sort of folk, um, forcing them, not forcing the viewers, but like uh, manipulating the viewers to look in places that I want them to. Speed is something that like, I didn't just come in here and I could just like, pump out something really quickly in one or two hours. Uh, I did practice the speed aspect of uh, painting as well. And that came from timing myself. And uh, I did practice actually one to two hour paintings um, when I used to do daily art. Um, mm. So it's, it comes with practice, even speed. You can be very detailed, but it could take you hours. But being able to manage, um, as I was saying before, like the illusion of detail, uh, helping the viewer know where you want them to look all that is like actually a, a separate skill from just uh, understanding illustration and detail. Um, as I work, I like to change like the levels of the background and all that just to help my character pop out. If I do the rim light, uh, I think that's what will help the this dark area pop out. I do want to clean up this sword first though. I want to make sure all that is clean before I apply anything like rim light because I think that's um, that's one of those things where like you, you apply it and then it'll be very hard to go back to where you're at since it's um, mm. pretty attention grabbing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think that's another great tip as well, just to make you feel that you're, as, as much as you can, that your shapes are defined and sort of established before you, you put in the, the visual effect. Because yes. if, you, if you merge a layer or if you, you know, change your mind and want to change the color or something, it's, it's going to be uh, harder and more difficult and potentially a bit muddier as well to, to do it later on. Yeah, and a good way to work around that is what I just did just then. So I grouped everything and I merged it, but I kept the group separately. After all, I duplicated the group and then merged it. So now I have a version before it got merged. So it feels less like, non or feels more non-destructive. Uh, I think the creative mind can be unlocked for a lot of people. You just have to know the process of creation. I didn't just come to this stage and um, understand everything. Uh, I wasn't like, you know, one like this either. So there's a lot of steps that I took to learn about creating this. And you just need that knowledge and education. Um, I would, there's like, uh, there's a lot of stuff online. You can watch YouTube videos about it. And even just watching a workflow can help you find ways to design that you never thought about before, which can simplify it and like, um, take away a lot of difficult elements like thinking about lighting and um, the unnecessary aspects so you can focus on design.